Welcome to the channel friends. So today's video is going to be a install video of the C6 ZR1 breather system by Synergy Motorsports. This catch can system is rated for up to 1400 horsepower and it installs inside the fender. And as you can see, it comes with a whole bunch of fittings and components and hoses and things like that. And I'm going to go over really quickly kind of what comes uh, with the kit when you get it brand new and uh, what the process is overall and how to install it on your car. Now, it does seem a little more uh, a little more difficult than say a standard like Mighty Mouse catch can. There's a lot more things going on here, but that's for a good reason. It's because it has it's very capable and it's basically a hybrid system just like your Mighty Mouse catch can. So it's a closed loop, open loop system. It automatically functions that way when it needs to. So normally it's going to be under vacuum, closed loop, and then when you get those crankcase pressures building up in your engine, like when you go wide open throttle, it will take that pressure and vent it through those filters there. There's little check valves built in there. There's like actually like a one inch plastic ball inside these, these vents here. And that will automatically close and open depending on the pressure uh, generated by the engine. So... I'm not going to go over the reason why you need a catch can. Um, I think you guys can figure out that out. And there's plenty of videos explaining why. But this is a larger volume system, as you can see. And this system here catches and separates much better than any other system for the C6. So the reason why I purchased this system is because I've seen other people install it on their C6 ZR1. And they have great success with separating the moisture from ethanol content from their fuel and it drains into this here and then when you drain it you get just pure moisture you don't get any oil the oil gets trapped and, and stays inside your engine which is great because typically with a mighty mouse catch can you would see oil and moisture mixing inside the catch can with this i should see just moisture and that oil is going to stay inside the actual engine so that's great because when you go and drain this from this area right here, there's going to be a hose attached to this. You're going to go ahead and drain it, and you're going to find nothing but like uh, off, uh, a somewhat clear liquid, you know, kind of off-colored, meaning that that's all the moisture that was extracted and separated from the vapors from the can crankcase. And um, that's essentially what I want. I want to keep the oil inside the engine. That way I'm not draining oil out of the engine. And just separating and removing that moisture from the, the ethanol that I'm using. So even race gas, even regular gas, pump gas will have ethanol, as you know, up to 10%. So this still could be beneficial to people running pump gas. But usually you only see people uh, run this type of system when they make 900, 1,000 wheel or more. Uh, they really don't go ahead and jump for this kit because it is a pricey kit. It is more involving to install. Um, this kit, I believe, is just over $1,000. You can take a look at the Synergy Motorsports website. But this kit here is actually the OG Synergy uh, production run. So if you guys don't know already, uh, Synergy Motorsports, as of, I believe, November 2022, changed ownership and the original founder and owner of Synergy Motorsports, Rick Hollenbach, is no longer there. So I cannot say what happens um, and what kind of quality or what comes with a kit uh, going forward because I got an OG, you know, Synergy, not the new Synergy. So I'm not sure how they're going to build their current catch cans. They're going to try to replicate what Rick did. But I'm telling you right now, this kit right here, according to Rick, was built by um, him and his uh, supervision, his, uh, under his supervision, I should say, um, during the time he was there. So I'm glad that I bought one of the last kits. I believe this was the last kit, according to Rick, and what I, from what I heard, I got the last one. Um, but just know that going forward that anything made from Synergy Motorsports uh, is probably going to be, might be different quality, I don't know. Uh, but this is what I have here, and that's what I want to kind of explain. Uh, just be aware of that. Okay, so really quick, let's go over what is included in the kit. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of stuff. Obviously, you have a nice set of detailed instructions. 
We have OEM style connectors. That's the mounting hardware. Comes with a clip that you might break taking the fender off. So that's included, that's nice. Over here we have the Dash 6 fittings and, and clamps. And over here is the Dash 8. This is the stuff used for the drain line. This is the bulkhead fitting that gets attached to the bottom of your fender. So this part right here will stick out and then will get capped off just like that. And then you'll go ahead and unscrew this to drain it from the bottom of your vehicle. You don't have to take anything apart besides this cap and it will all drain out onto like a, a pan or a tray. Over here are the Dash 10 fittings and these are Dash 10 bungs that go on your valve cover. I won't be using these because I already have Dash 10 bungs on both my valve covers but that is included uh, just in case you don't. You'll have to weld those on. So those fittings there are your standard AN type screw on fittings. And here you get a couple different hoses. So you get a Dash 10 braided hose. This is the stuff with the stainless braid in it. A Dash 6 and a Dash 8 drain hose. This is the one that goes in the bottom. So I may go ahead and not use this hose, I'm not sure. I honestly don't like this braided hose because what happens is once you get it dirty over time with pollen and dust and whatever driving the car, this stuff, you know, kind of looks like shit, you know, even though it's a, a great looking hose right now. I really like the, the look of this, but over time it just goes downhill quickly because if you're not on top of it and uh, you clean that up, it just, it just, I think it, it looks bad. So I may go ahead and switch that hose out. I'm not sure, but let me go ahead and, and finish explaining what else is included here. All right, so let's take a look at the catch can itself. Very nice construction. It's all TIG welded together. You got a mounting tab and here are your vents. So let's take a look at these vents. Let's take them off. So you guys can understand what's going on here. So these automatically will vent when there's pro positive pressure inside this can. So inside here, as you can see, there is a ball, like a one inch plastic ball. You can hear it. And that, when you, when you blow on it, when there's positive pressure on the bottom of it, it actually will release air through these little vents here, these slots, as you can see. So that's how that works, it's very simple. It's just, a, like I said, a one inch plastic ball that will lift up and let out the excess pressure. Very simple design. Now there's baffles on the inside here. I believe there's two. Uh, one going this way, one going another way. And according to the instructions, this side here, your left side, if you're looking at the can like this, so you have the, the four fittings there. This is your dirty side, so your suction side. These two here, these Tash 10s, are for your valve covers. This here is for the valley plate port. And this here, the other Dash 6, is for the dry sump. And then on the other side, this is your clean side, which is your outlet side. So the side with three fittings, you're going to have one goes to your clean air bridge, so that's the, the fitting on your on your air filter. There's a little port on the side there, okay? And then the other here is for the snout. So there's a little port on the snout. This is what pulls the vacuum on the system. So one is for the snout and one is for the clean air bridge. So that duct work that goes to your filter, right near your filter, there's a little port there. That goes there and then the snout. This one here, this Dash 10, is actually not used it's for extra um, capacity or um, you know further expanding the system so this on the c6 zr1 will not be used it's going to be capped off and it's just there just in case you need added capability or flexibility in your system and then at the very bottom the dash 8 is obviously going to be your drain line and then you'll have that bulkhead fitting that attaches to your fender at the very bottom so that there is the can I'm going to go ahead now and get the scale and show you guys kind of what this stuff weighs because, you know, it is a little bit heavier than a Mighty Mouse catch can, so you might want to know the weight. So let me go set that up and I'll be right back.
Okay, so the can itself is three pounds, four ounces, we could say. Now let's go ahead and start throwing on some of this hose and tubing and see how, what it goes to. All right, so right there we're at eight pounds, nine ounces, and that's just with the can and the hose. I would probably add another pound for all these fittings and this other hose as well. So you're looking at close to like almost 10 pounds with this thing um, in addition to your existing setup. So that's what it weighs. I would call it 10 pounds. Um, yeah, you might cut some hose off and this and that, but you're going to be right around there um, as you can see. So let's go over to the car now and show you guys what I've done so far and what it takes to uh, prep the actual mounting surface and to get the can mounted up All right, so here is what I did uh, to prep the surface you actually have to trim away this like um, area that bulges out along this edge So the can can actually fit snugly up against the surface uh, Otherwise you'll be sticking out and it's not going to sit right so you have to tuck it in as much as you can because the can is so large that it might actually hit the fender on the inside possibly if you don't take that into consideration and kind of like have it snug up up against this chassis. Very easily I cut this out as you can see just like that with this tool right here. One of these mini reciprocating saws. It works awesome. So I went ahead and trimmed that out as you can see. And it's very important, like I said, because you may hit the inside of the, the actual fender. You got your gills here that's actually stick into the vehicle, uh, into the into the space quite a bit. So you're going to come very close to that can once you have it installed. And you don't want it to touch anything else on the inside here. So that there is what I did to prep the surface. I went ahead and marked my holes where I think it fits best. Um, according to the way the instructions say, it looks like you want it to be about this left edge of the bracket. You'll want it to be about six inches away from this inside surface here, this big slot. So measure six inches from here to there. And then from the top down here, you want the top of the bracket to be one inch down. So that pretty much centers the bracket within this space here. In this space here so I was taking the dash six fittings and basically um, centering them in between this space and that gives you plenty of room on this side and this side and when I took a look at it from the side here imagining that I had the fender installed everything looked good it, it stayed within the bounds of the fender so I'm gonna go ahead and install a piece of like foam a rubber strip here on top of the tank because it will cinch down once you bolt it down in this location and it may rub on this tank. So I'm going to go ahead and install something to protect this to make sure the bottom of the tank edge doesn't dig a hole in my washer fluid tank. So that's something I'm going to do when I noticed. So I'm going to install that there. That way it's tucked in all the way and it's kind of resting on this because if you notice the bottom of the can has a 45 and it's, it's to, it's to sit on top of this and to mimic that profile. So, that's what I did there. You know, you got to be careful. Take your fender off. That little clip is right here. There's a screw down inside there as well. You got to pry this back and make sure you don't break this clip. But if you do, that's okay because they include one in the kit. But taking the fender off is, um, it's, it's pretty easy once you do it once or twice. There's going to be three bolts underneath here. I'll just show you the actual fender. So there's going to be three bolts, sorry, nuts that are going to be attached here. You're going to want to take those off, take off your, your inner panel. And behind here, there's going to be a seven millimeter. That's going to be uh, kind of hard to get and extremely hard to put back in. So this right here, this is the actual, like the nut. I, what I did was it was flipped the other way originally. So with the stock configuration, it was flipped. 
but once you put the can in here you're not gonna be able to get to this location and put that that screw back in so I want to put that screw back in the instructions say not to but I'm gonna go ahead and do that because I'm just gonna end up flipping this and coming in from this angle and reaching in and installing that screw because you want to keep that screw there because I think it's important to keep the the body lines correct so if you don't have that there you're gonna end up running the chance of this line right here not matching up correctly with the door so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go ahead and flip that and try to install that uh, the best I can so that there is what I did to prep the chassis um, that's something that's not discussed on the website It's something you end up figuring out and uh, realizing once you start reading the instructions I didn't know that but you do have to trim that piece away it's not that complicated uh, but you will need a, some type of saw to do that so let me go ahead and start mounting up the can and I'll show you what the process is like. Okay, so here is the catch can mounted up. As you can see, it fits nice. I went ahead and installed that piece of foam right in here on that corner uh, to prevent any rubbing on the washer tank and to keep this stable. So I went ahead and took care of that. That way I, I don't have to worry about that issue. Um, so now it's going to be laying out the lines and running all the lines and attaching all the fittings and get everything routed up to the catch can. So let me go ahead and do that and then I'll update you guys on what's going on. All right, guys, so let's wrap up this uh, breather system install. And this right here is a quick sneak peek of the next project I have. I'm going to be splitting open the headlight housings and replacing the existing gray insert with this carbon fiber insert and yes it is real carbon fiber not hydro dipped so that's going to be next up on the plate but let's go ahead and take a look at the finished product here don't mind the expansion tank here i'm not done uh, tig welding it so that hasn't got my treatment yet I just put it in there to get kind of an idea of what it looks like with all the lines and everything in the way. So that did help me install everything correctly. So I have plenty of clearance with my lines. So we'll start from the, the front to the back, I guess. As you can see, I installed these braided lines here. This is for the fresh air draw. This one here on the left is from um, the vacuum source. So that goes to the snout. And this one here is for the valley plate to extract all those um, fumes and positive pressure and over here as you can see I'm over at the dry sump and I have this one here is the extraction and this is the vent for the dry sump this one right here goes to the um, the dirty side of the can so the left side of the can so this right here I slightly deviated from the instructions because I have this elite engineering uh, cap this cap right here is like a mini catch can so what happens is um, It doesn't allow anything back into your existing intake. So the, the air bridge So it's not gonna let anything into here. So what I did was I just ran that this is gonna supply fresh air into the dry sump to, to vent it properly and This is gonna be the extraction point going to the breather system on the left side this line right here is a balance line that goes down to the bottom port on the dry sump. There's actually an additional canister down low. If you guys don't know that, this is a 2012. So it has that fitting at the bottom. I just basically loop that back into the, the dry sump. And that's how that works. And I'm really happy with the way it came out. Um, cutting the AN line, this is braided line, so it has a stainless steel braid in it. It is kind of tough if you don't cut it clean the first try and try to install the fitting you're gonna have a problem so you're gonna to have to either use dedicated cutters I used a cutoff wheel on a high-speed setting um, you know just a regular like 40,000 50,000 cutoff wheel at high speed and it, it cut it clean and then if I had to touch it up I hit it up with the um, with the grinder just to, to smooth it out with the, uh, the this belt grinder here so this will be my finishing touch of coming up over here and just kind of blip the end of the, the hose that, to kind of smooth it out and to, you know, blend over that, that stainless braid to make sure it's perfect and, and nice and square. So it's nice having these tools. Like I said, I used a cutoff wheel first, then I used that, that belt sander there. 
but I'm really happy with the way it looks, super clean. The kit comes with everything I needed to install, all the standard OEM SAE connectors. I will tell you this is very hard to install because those connectors do not want to go out over or inside the um, the actual braided line because it's so stiff. So you have to heat it up and use some uh, lubricant as well to slide those fittings on. Uh, but I did have luck. I got everything done. I went ahead and routed this down below the AC lines and up back behind and over because I want a nice clean look. I don't want the look of lines going across the valve covers. I want my valve covers exposed. Kind of That's the, the kind of look I want to keep on the car. I want to have it nice and neat and have all the lines kind of hidden as you can see what I did on the other side, the same thing as well. So I'm really happy with the way it came out. You know, I did have these lines going across here, the fuel rail, but I just did not like the way they look. So I was like, nope, I gotta, I gotta route those the long way and kind of hide them underneath everything. So next step is to take care of this CPR expansion tank. And I'm gonna go ahead and, and weld on some dash 12 fittings in and out. So that's it just for mock-up but I will have to go ahead and wrap this just like I did my other tank with foam and reflective tape uh, to keep the heat from soaking into it and um, putting more of a heat load on the heat exchanger. So that's the reason why I do it. Some people just run it bare like that, um, but with all the heat in this engine bay, that's gonna soak up all the heat and basically it's gonna make your heat exchanger work harder and your whole intercooler system. So let's go over here and take a look there's really not much to see from here besides, you know, I have my my valve covers are on the back side. So you can see the fitting there is a 90 degree fitting. There's one on either side. Let me go show you the other side. So kind of really tight fitting in there. I got lucky and made everything work, especially with my fuel lines, because I have my fuel line come up and around and over to the filter here. And I'm glad that worked out. But yeah, like I said, there's not much to see over here besides um, the rest of the install, which looks super, super clean. And here is the can. So the breather system. I have all my lines plumbed up and zip tied. Uh, the very last thing is to go ahead and drill a hole in the fender when it's installed. So I will have to mark a hole here uh, where the fender is going to be and then install this bulkhead fitting. So then you can go ahead and unscrew the bottom and it won't move once you cinch that thing down. So I will tell you, honestly, installing this system is um, kind of a task because there's a lot going on, a lot of lines, especially if you're not familiar with working with AN lines, they kind of suck, um, you know, cutting them nicely and, and making sure they're nice and, and perfect so the, the fitting will go slip on and then not give you a problem. But, you know, take your time. Don't expect this to be done uh, in a few hours. This is probably more like a, a day, day and a half project where you take your time and you kind of you work on it a little bit at a time like I did. Um, but the finished result is going to be a high performance system that's going to keep the oil in the engine and extract and contain all that moisture and have it right over here so you can drain it out. That's the biggest benefit of this system. That's the reason why I spent the a uh, thousand plus dollars and end up picking it up because I was just sick of seeing so much oil being either inside my intake into the snout or uh, inside the can itself because it does build up especially if you drive the car a lot it will build up a lot and um, then you end up forgetting about it and then before you know it all that extra oil that's in the can ends up in the intake and um, that's not what I want so I'm really happy with this system this system should be the ticket to having a oil-free and bone-dry intake. And um, it's pretty much the best system for the C6 from, from what I see, you know, other people's experience and um, all the different views over the past years. So that there is the uh, system. I'm really happy with it. Like I said, now it's just a matter of um, putting on that fender, taking that, um, that drain fitting there and installing it into the bottom of the fender and then trying it out, make sure the system works. I'm just gonna make sure that it's pulling a vacuum like how it should. I've already double checked it, but like I like to go through it one last time when everything's done. And um, like I said, the next project's gonna be the headlights.
these guys are going to come out and I'm going to replace them with the carbon fiber. And that's going to be probably the last thing I have to do uh, for this season. Uh, if you don't know already, I went ahead and installed a 120 millimeter Nick Williams throttle body. But also I did a stage 3 port or stage 3 re revision on my own hand port on this blower. So we'll see how that does. Um, I really opened up that snout a lot. It is almost a true 5 inch all the way through. And uh, I did a lot of more porting throughout the blower uh, to compensate for all that extra added airflow and opening of the throttle body. So we'll see how that pans out. I'll be hitting the dyno soon, uh, probably in May or so. And um, we'll go from there and see how the car performs. So that's going to be it for the video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed um, the video. If you have any questions or comments, please place them right down below. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please go ahead and do so. I want to thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.